I met Kyle a couple years ago at the Design Science Association meetings. One day Kyle called me up and said he wanted to film me about the Ice Age and so that's how we did this and we went all over the place of Montana, Wyoming. We went to places that were glaciated not too long ago uh, like at Mount Hood along the Rocky Mountain front uh, west of, of Great Falls. We were up on that cliff that that had an ice cap over the northern Rockies and moved 10 miles or so out onto the high plains. We went up to Turner, right up along near the Canadian border, and saw a huge erratic boulder. It's different than a, se a seminar talk because um, I would present maybe one picture in isolation, but in this DVD, we're out there scanning the whole area, looking at the features in a lot more depth and, and time, in multiple areas, and getting a better picture out in the field. The field has more influence, well, I found, with people than, than lectures do, because they see it before their eyes. Other than going out there, them taking them out there, this is the second best way is to have a documentary out there in the field. I'm excited about this because secular scientists, as well as some theistic scientists, claim there's no evidence for the flood, while the Bible says it's global, and therefore there should be lots of evidence and the Ice Age is a very powerful evidence for the reality of the Flood because the Flood caused the Ice Age. And they can't explain the Ice Age, even though they have 60 theories, and yet we have a straightforward uh, theory based on the Flood, which uh, goes back and says that the Flood is a real event in history. And so this is evidence that the Flood was, was real and global. I have a master's degree in atmospheric science, and so when I first got into creationism almost 40 years ago and wanted to do research, the Ice Age came to mind, and um, so I've been working on the Ice Age for 35 to 40 years. I must say that my model, some of the ideas came from others, uh, other creationists, Henry Morris, uh, Harold Clark. I mean, these people had already thought of the idea of volcanism causing the cooling and warm water after the flood causing more evaporation. It's just that that's all they said. No one put it all together, uh, which is what I did. And this theory upholds the flood, which upholds the Bible. 